How would you like to be able to read up to four books a day and remember what you read? Do you think it's possible to be able to learn to read, say, 25,000 words in a minute? Well, today we're going to find out whether it's possible, and if it is, find out how you can do it. And joining me from uh, uh, Minneapolis and Minnesota is Paul Sheely, the author of a book entitled The Photo Reading Whole Mind System. Is it really possible, Paul, to read 25,000 words a minute? It's not only possible, but we've been teaching people how to do it all over the world for the last 10 years. H how is it achieved? Well, it's remarkable. You know, we, we first published our book only a couple of years ago. Our seminar came out back in 1985. We first introduced it to the general public in 1986. You know that when the state of Minnesota discovered that we were teaching reading in the state, they said, you know that it's a criminal offense to teach reading in the state of Minnesota without a license? I've been in human resource <laughs> development for 10 years prior to then. I'd never heard of such a thing. So they sent a group over to our offices and then studied the graduates of the first couple of programs that we'd done. And a subject matter expert was hired to review this. He said, not only am I going to recommend to the state of Minnesota that they go ahead and license you as a private school, and am I going to endorse your, your course, but I'm also going to suggest how you can present this in a way so that people don't immediately switch you off, but really tune into what this is, because this is a revolution in how the brain processes information. How does, the, how does the brain process information in terms of reading? Well, think of it, think of what we're all equipped with and how we learn as infants, little children. You know, we, we approach the world and everything, all of our sensory systems are open and everything is coming in. We don't narrowly focus on any one thing unless it's of particular interest. Think about the way you look at a landscape. You look at the entire landscape and if something catches your interest, you might focus in. Basically, that's what we've done with the photo reading whole mind system. We take in the entire book at once using what's called the pre-conscious processor of the mind. You literally, like a computer, download all of those words into your inner mind, and then, depending upon what your particular needs are for that book, you'll focus in on the specific passages that you want. It's different than skimming and scanning, because what you have inside is all of that material. What we're teaching is how to mentally photograph the written page. As you mentioned, 25,000 words a minute, but really, it's at a page a second or faster. Well, I guess what you're really saying is that if we all accept the fact that if we were to look out our window right now, we, our eyes have these millions of millions of receptors, of light receptors, we'd be able to take in in a flash, whether it was a mountain scene or you're looking out on a river, you'd be able to take in the entire scene. You're saying that you can actually do that as you flip over the pages of a book as well? Yes, absolutely. You see, the way we learn to learn at school kind of reversed the way the brain naturally approaches learning. Think of it as um, a funnel. You know, usually when we want to get something in, we have the funnel right side up. But what we did when we went to school, instead of taking the world as a child does, everything at once, what we did is we turned that funnel wrong side up. Now we start feeding in a single letter, a single sound, a single word at a time in hope that we're going to make sense of it when it's all done. Well, what we've done with photo reading is we've turned the funnel right side up. Now that you're a skilled adult reader, having learned in school, what we want to show you is that the training wheels they put on your brain to help you learn to read can come off and you can really discover you have rockets there instead. It is possible for you to take in information at a tremendous rate, something like 20,000 bits of information a second. And there's a lot less than that on a single page of text. So, yeah. Let's go through some of the principles then. Okay. Uh, first, people who are joining us today for the first time uh, and perhaps have, uh, have not been studying reading, what are the best steps that you recommend people should take to learn to be a much more efficient and better reader? Well, if you can think of all reading as being something that you have to be active, purposeful, questioning when you approach it. You're going to be using your whole mind at those moments. When you approach a text, basically what you want to think about is how can I get the core meaning out of this? You know, Richard Saul Worman wrote a book called Information Anxiety. He said, we're in a society where we have information overload. We have too much data and too little ability to extract the meaning from that. So basically, if you can think of all good reading as being active, purposeful questioning, going for the core concept, what we have done is we've constructed a program which includes the photo reading process, mentally photographing written materials at 25,000 words a minute, but also the rest of the context is the photo reading whole mind system. It includes preparing yourself, 
previewing the material, photo reading, meaning downloading all of it into your brain, then becoming active, tuning into the exact meaning that you want and getting going, and if necessary, to rapid read, move from start to finish in the book. Most business people, most students would never even have to get to that last step. Think of it this way, if you could take a book, say, if I could, if you take a book that would normally take you, say, 10 hours to read normally, we're going to show you how in the time it would take to go through one or two chapters of the back of the book, you're going to be able to finish the entire book. Basically, um, in 15 to 20 minutes, you should be able to complete any book, a standard paperback book of a couple hundred pages. Now, to activate that book fully would depend on what specific needs you have. If you're a student, you want to write a college-level paper on it. If you're a business person, do you want to be able to share facts with the team that you're with at, at work? That might mean an activation of 20 minutes, it might mean 45 minutes, it might mean an hour and a half. If you take, take a 200-page book, instead of taking 10 to 12 hours with it, in an hour and a half you're going to know it better than if you had spent those 12 hours. Interesting to me, I find that uh, uh, my job for a large part of my life has been as a radio and television talk show host, yeah. uh, running daily radio programs, interviewing all sorts of people. And during my career on that, I averaged 15 new books a week. I had to yeah. do that. And people find that quite incredible. Yeah. And it, when I say to them, but hold on, they, they say, well, we couldn't read four books in a day. And I say, did you read the Sunday newspaper on Sunday? In the United States, if you were to read the New York Times on a Sunday, yeah. it's probably the equivalent of about 30 books or the Los Angeles Times. But even an average newspaper, a Sunday or weekend newspaper in America, is probably the equivalent of about four books. Mm -hmm. Now, each of us has cracked the codes of reading, of reading a newspaper. We only read the houses for sale classified columns if we want to buy a house or check the price in our area. We know the code, we know how to go through the alphabetical index. If we're interested in sport, we're interested in baseball, we go to the baseball page. We might ignore the squash or tennis page. We know how to do that. So what you're really saying is, first of all, start to read anything like you read a newspaper. Know what you want to get out of it. You've got it right on. You see, the idea that you're talking about is the code that you refer to is the schema upon which the writing is based. So some factual information is presented along a certain schema where first the author presents the problem and then creates an argument for where the problem comes from, then provides a solution, you see. And if you can look at something, quickly extract the schema, then you can move into that text actively, purposely, with good questions in your mind and extract the core meaning out of it that you want. So what if you could look at a book and in a matter of minutes, crack the code, as you say, get the schema from it. The more typical thing, and viewers will understand this right away, they see a book, they want that book, they grab it, they bring it home, open it up on the first page and start reading word for word, one word at a time, they get through maybe 15, 20 minutes of it and guess where the book goes? Yeah, yeah. On the stack next yeah. to the other 100 books they haven't read. When does that change? If you always take the same approach and nothing changes, nothing yeah. changes. And if, you, if you can correct the code, for instance, I was a... I, um, a court reporter for many years, okay. and if you've been covering a Supreme Court case in, in my own country, I know that the, the judgment then is given several weeks later. When you come back to do the judgment, you always know that the judge will summarize something for about 20 or 30 pages, mm -hmm. but you can turn to the very last the very last sentence or the very last paragraph, and that tells you whether you've been fined $100,000 or sent to jail for five years. Yes, so any right. journalist knows that you crack the code of reading a Supreme Court judgment, you go to the last sentence. Exactly. You do not start from going from the front. That's where the key is to that. Yeah, so what you've done is, you see, you're, you've taken reading, in your case, by, by survival, a necessity of survival. You've taken reading from a procedure where you start at the beginning, you slog through to the end, and what you've done is you've sort of taken it apart and said, now, what's going to give me the result I want? That's exactly what I did. I was first invited by a company in the Minneapolis area, IDS American Express, to develop an alternative to traditional speed reading using the principles of accelerated learning. When I put together the photo reading system, basically that's what I showed them how to do. A report, the kind of stuff that they would put in their briefcase, never read, take it out the next day feeling guilty and put it on the pile, and then they would generate the same kind of reports for everybody else in their organization having never read it. But in those reports would normally take them two and a half hours to read if they ever got around to reading them. In 9 to 13 minutes, I could show them how to have it totally handled. Because we did exactly that, show them how to take a whole mind approach to decompose reading 
into a set of options. Not a step-by-step -step procedure, but a set of options. So now my business reading can get done easier, my pleasure reading can get done, I can get ahead, I can keep up and get ahead in my profession as a result of it. Before you arrived in the studio today, I picked up a copy of your book and I read it in 20 minutes. Now, let me tell you what I did and we'll see whether it can pay a note. The first thing I did, I knew what the subject was, but I actually looked at the, I looked at the index, the table of contents, to see what was there of things that might, might be new to me. I then went through the book very quickly and I read all the subjects. I read the chapter headings and the subheadings and looked at the pictures, so they gave me the overall, the overall view of what I needed to do. I wanted to bring out the main key points from obviously the discussion we're having today, and yet that's the approach that I would normally take. I, I was reading that for the purpose of doing an interview. If I was reading it for the purpose of uh, writing a book on or writing an article on it, I might look at it different, different things. Is that what you mean about working out what you want to get out of a book for a start? Exactly right. So we'll, we'll just run by your process, yep. because basically this is what I did in developing the course. I went to the best readers that I could find anywhere, and using the skills of neuro-linguistic programming, which is what I was trained in, I modeled how they did what they did. For example, a speed reader might go to a class in speed reading, one out of a hundred speed readers will get to rates of 25,000 words a minute. What I was interested in is, not what's the speed reading approach, what's the difference that made the difference for that one out of a hundred? That's what I was interested in. So, taking your process... So, so right I, was actually now, doing, I was actually doing a basic skim reading or speed reading technique yeah, rather than photo reading. Basically, but let's, let's see. Okay, first of all, you had a clear purpose. You knew an interview was coming. So, in establishing your purpose, you knew your ultimate outcome. You also knew how much time you were willing to take. Okay, now most... I only had 20 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> right. So you had to get the task done in that 20 minutes time. I have an interesting story about college professors about that. Then. But, okay, the, the next step is then you then previewed the book, which means table of contents, perhaps index, although you didn't, you didn't go that. You looked at the chapter headers. So what did you see? You saw the layout of the book. You saw part one, part two, part three. You saw what was happening in each part. You know that in the middle part, I'm teaching you the five steps of the photo reading whole mind system, right? What's happening at the end is how to integrate the skills. So you can see, here's the setup, here are the skills, here's the integration of those skills. So you start to see the schema. Now, go to the next level of detail. You also had a mind map in the, you also had a yeah. mind map in the book, which then Excellent. covered in pictorial sense the main, the main And since you're there. used to looking at mind maps, you can look at that. All at once, you can create the structure in your mind of exactly how the whole system fits together. In fact, your book is actually structured quite well in the sense Thank of you. that. Uh, you're probably aware that Jeanette Voss and I, when we wrote The Learning Revolution, we actually started off the very first page in the book, said how to read this book in one tenth the time, yeah. and on the opposite page says how to remember the main points from this book by making a mind map. A mind map being, of course, a pictorial representation of it. So the mind map of your book, which gave all the main points, was actually probably all I needed to look at today. If I'd actually if I'd done that first, that, that covered all the key points that we are going through in terms of structure. Exactly right. Yeah. And we went through, by the way, we planned that book in terms of rapid reading, mm -hmm. by having every second page, every start of a chapter has a summary of the chapter, so that you actually can flip through every left-hand page, and in 10 minutes you can read, the, you can read all the key points, you get that, that lets you know which chapters you really need to read. That's right. If you're a pregnant woman, you want to read the chapter on pregnancy. If you have a, a teenage a son or daughter, or you have a, a child at, uh, in between the ages of North and five, you know to go to the chapter on how, how to teach infants to read, for instance. Exactly. Same sort of principle. Same exact yes. principle. And Richard Saul Worman first kind of heralded this idea, said we need to write yes. for the person to read more efficiently. Yes. And what I said when developing photo reading is that, that he might be true. That he might be right about that. Yes. And I do believe the statement is true. However, until the world of literature is written the way you and I are writing <laughs> books, we have to teach people to be able to do what you've done for them for themselves. So let's see how you did that. The next step that you did in the process, once you got the whole thing, is you spent the remaining of the 20 minutes, which is probably a good 15 minutes you had left, yes. just to look at the more specific, specific points. Yes. Yes. This is what we call super reading and dipping. It's yes. part of the activation process. The final step would be start to finish, if necessary. But my guess is, from what you've gotten already in 15 minutes, you wouldn't, the book. you wouldn't need to invest because we, all, we, because we all come to a subject with certain with certain knowledge. For instance, knowledge. We, for instance when I learnt, learnt uh, how to use the PageMaker system for desktop publishing, I brought to that. Uh, I didn't know the computer, but I certainly could type 
I was a journalist, I knew typography, so I didn't have to go through all the chapters of the 600-page page-maker manual on typing or on typography. Yes. That was second nature to me, so I could disregard okay. that and zero in on that. Now, here's an interesting point. The prior knowledge allows you to go so far. Now, here's a banker that had taken the photo reading program, he bought a new computer and a new printer, and he couldn't get the two to interface. He looked at the manual, called up technical support from both companies, worked for hours that day, could not get them together. So, at the end of the day in desperation, he gave up, but before he went to sleep at night, he said, I'm going to photo read the manual. Now, this is the one step that you hadn't used in looking through my book. So what he did is he took these books, got into state, gets in a particular type of gaze, it's sort of a divergent gaze, as if he's pulling in both pages at once. He then photo read the book, which is mentally photographing the pages start to finish, both manual, closed them up, in his mind said, tomorrow morning I want my brain to put together the answer on how to get these to work. Went to bed, the next morning he woke up, within 30 minutes they were working. What had taken him hours the day before, got him no place, 30 minutes had all been done. He called me up, he said, this is very remarkable to me, because consciously I couldn't do it. But my other than conscious mind could, and this is what cognitive sciences are finding out, it's called the non-conscious acquisition of information, that the bigger database, the greater processor within us is not the conscious mind, it's the other than conscious mind. And it has the ability to, to take very complex information with extremely complex structures and put it together in a way that it could then deliver it to us almost at a conscious level. Almost very much Let's go through some of those points, because you said he started off by actually getting himself into the right state. How do you get yourself into the right state for, for photo reading? Okay, as long as we understand, first of all, that the photo reading whole mind system includes these five points. It's prepare, preview, photo read, activate, rapid read. Then let's look at the step of photo reading itself. And you know, in our home study program, we show you actually how to photo read, and you'll photo read the dictionary on side B of the very first page. So it's not a difficult process to learn. You can actually do it quite quickly. I remember the character in Rain Man doing that with it for the phone book. Remember yeah. the, the uh, so-called so idiot savants are able to That's do right. so. They actually go right through the phone book and know exactly which page. Uh, yeah. And okay. if we had more time, there's just so many rich stories about yeah. the, the kind of demonstrations of that that come through as a result of the class. But let's take just the photo reading step. The first step is really to get ourselves into the right state of mind. Now. The, the ideal state for learning, and I'm sure you've covered this on other of your programs, is when it's relaxed and alert. It's a relaxed state of alertness. Uh, neurological researchers will say this is kind of the alpha state. It's a zone in which we're much more open to the reception. Of With the brain wave, in fact, down, it, it goes down more, shifts down, down shifts into a, into a, rather than the alert open mind. Exactly. The alert mind being effectively where you're using information that you've already got in. In other words, you're driving for around, testing, you're, 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 stuff you've got in, but, but in exactly. fact when you're taking it in, it's best to actually disregard that. Almost to tune into a new television or radio station. That's right. Like as, as one of my colleagues, uh, Noah Gordon, talks about, he said, tune into the learning channel. Yeah. And That's the right, learning the channel yeah. is that through that, that relaxation system. gate, it's kind of a flow state. How do you do that then? How do you tune into that? It's actually quite simple. We'll show you how to do it by taking a deep breath in and simply exhaling and letting go. We'll give ourselves a series of signals to do that. But if you can think of just right now, anybody watching the show could just, as they sit, just let their shoulders drop a little bit. And as you breathe, notice the movement of your breath in your nostrils. Just by doing that, you become immediately more aware. The next state is that the next thing in the process is to give yourself a set of positive or affirmative statements that will assist you in taking on this information. For example, I want the information in the photo reading whole mind system by Paul Sheely to accomplish my goal of. So what is the goal that you have? You state that to your inner mind. It is now a goal seeking device. It's a success mechanism that wants to get to that goal. So it's, it's on board now. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get ourselves in the right state visually. Now there are two very interesting and unique things about this process. The first is to bring an awareness, a point of attention to the top back part of our heads. And in my book I explain why. This is developed by a man named Ron Davis. There is an ideal point of attention for reading. And that's by bringing your attention to this spot just above and behind your head. It's like the Chinese thinking cap or a wizard's hat, sort of a, 
a cone shape, place a spot of awareness just above and behind your head. Why is it important and how do you do that? It, it's very curious why it's important. I don't think we could really get yeah. out why it's so, but it makes a huge difference. I'll give you a quick example. If you become aware of the feeling of your right foot, you can do that. Yes, sir. How about your left kneecap? Yes. Sir. Your right elbow? Mm -hmm. uh, the spot in the center of your eyebrows where the breath is going yes, in? Sir. Top so you, so back you, so part of your head. Thinking about that. Yes. Top back part of your head. Yeah, yeah. Now, when your awareness is at the top back part of your head, it opens the brain to a new level of processing. Think about where our visual images process. The yeah, occipital lobe in the back part of the head. So, by bringing our attention here, it's as if we're drawing the neurological energy, the blood flow to this area. Perhaps. Certainly, there are a lot more subjective experiences that immediately say this makes a difference. When you've been fully absorbed in reading, mm -hmm. to the exclusion of all else, yes. you're not in your body looking at the page, yes, right. sounding out the words, you're back here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we'll show you to do. Okay, now once you've done that, you open up the book, look at the entire book at once. Notice your eyes will go through the center crease, but have your awareness on the four corners simultaneously. In fact, you could even notice the room around that. Look at the white space well, on the page. expanding your vision. Exactly right. Notice the pattern that the white space makes. Turn the page, notice the pattern that the white space makes. Each time you do this, you're basically taking a mental photograph of that page. When you're done, close the book, and now here's an important part. You close your eyes, affirm to yourself that all of this material that you've just photo read has made an impression on your inner mind. And here's another piece. To pay attention to the emotional response that you're having to this book. Now, if you've done any professional writing, which I know you have, you understand that the best time to now start interacting with the material is not right now. You should get away from it for a few minutes. Let it incubate. And after that incubation time, and it might be 20 minutes, it might be the next day, now we want to become active. We want to move through that book and pull out those core concepts that you want. That is fantastic. And you're saying that if people develop these techniques, they can genuinely read up to 25,000 words a minute? I'd like to but say more that... But more, more importantly, to extract and recall the knowledge exactly that they want. Exactly right. The exactly right. Because yes. I want to redefine yes. reading. Yes. Because reading as we know it is a very limited auditory process, moving from start to finish. Yes, the brain can do this. We have the equipment already installed within us. This is simply a way of using this powerful resource in a way that will get you the results you need. The purpose? To get your reading done the time you have available at a level of comprehension you need. Yeah. Paul Shealy, thank you very, very much for being on our program today. I think one of the really interesting points is that a key part of the learning revolution is the reading revolution itself. And thank you very much for taking us through the process, not only of rapid reading, but photo reading. Paul Shealy from uh, Minnesota, uh, in Minneapolis and Minnesota, the photo, the photo reading whole mind system book. Thank you again. And thank you for joining us once again as we look at this fascinating revolution, the learning revolution.